<laughs> Should we sing? Okay. Sing or clap hands. Mm-hmm. Oh. My family ancestrally is from Gujarat, India. I'm fourth generation East African, so my great-great-grandparents came to East Africa from India in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and we moved to Canada in the 70s. And we moved from Nairobi, Kenya, into Red Deer, Alberta, central Alberta. I am from the Statlium a Lilawat Nation. Uh, my traditional name is Kakiachshut, and I am a composer and traditional singer. I teach singing uh, the way my mother taught me. So Flora Wallace was my my mom, and she taught me a lot of things about Salish singing. So I carry on that work, um, teaching the songs that she taught me, but also teaching how to, how to sing. I'm a child of uh, immigrants uh, of different cultures and Eastern European cultures, one Mediterranean, one Northern-ish. My musical identity is rooted, I mean, as anyone else's experientially, but my journey into sound has been a very, like, physical one. I've always been drawn to the sensation of sound, of how it makes me and the space around me feel, how it makes the people around me feel, the kind of compound nature of song that we get to put language, we get to illuminate language with greater context. I am from the Shtatlium nation and also have roots in Stalo territory on my mother's side. I have English and Irish heritage on my father's side and I am based in Coquitlam. I do some work um, at the SFU campus. I am working with student teachers, so in the Faculty of Education as a faculty associate, and I help student teachers along their teaching journey so that they can become teachers soon, hopefully. And I also um, lead drum circles and workshops, cultural drumming and singing, hand drumming and singing, and sing on different projects as well. I am very honored to be on these indigenous lands of Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, Squamish. I immigrated from India um, in 2017 to pursue music, jazz music, or studying jazz music here in Canada. And since then, I have been um, collaborating with other artists, writing my own music, singing, composing, and doing all kinds of um, musical ventures that helps me grow. I started as a pianist in like a Royal Conservatory, you know, very like level-based system where you did exams and you, you know, went to festival every year and and competed and uh, yeah, I started there. I don't know if I really have an identity. <laughs> I don't know if I have an identity. I um, like so many cross-cultural kids, right? I, I don't think identity was really. Uh, encouraged. Assimilation was encouraged. I think, you know, in most colonial structures, assimilation is encouraged. The way I experienced life in East Africa was a very intercultural, pluralistic, polycultural perspective. We had Swahili heritage, which was already a combination of local indigenous African cultures, Arabic cultures, and then we had our Indian culture, and as well, we had colonial British culture all interacting with each other. I would say that these, ki- these cultural experiences created a fingerprint on my soul and gave me a vision internally of what I wanted to see more of in the world. So my musicality uh, uh, is largely shaped by my experience of growing up in India and um, getting into Hindustani classical music under my guru, Dr. Ritu Jori. And then I was introduced to Western harmonies and music, uh, particularly jazz. And the harmonic content in this music really drew me to another facet or another side of music. I moved here to study it. And now, as a composer, I find that both of these influences largely shape my um, compositions, uh, the way that I improvise, the way that I interact with other musicians. As a, like, as a queer non-binary, t- 
tall soprano, you know, in this very binary, misogynistic, racist, classist practice, you know, and architecture of, of you know, classical music. I, I remember being told by someone in my master's degree, and this was in like the late aughts, so not that long ago, but still long enough ago that, I mean, people were still kind of getting away with this. Um, but it was like, no one's going to take you seriously if you walk into an audition wearing pants. Primarily, my identity is, I would say, defined by my religious identity or my spiritual faith identity. I am a Shia Ismaili Muslim. The teachings and cultural ways of knowing and being from that perspective are ones that really guide how I function in the world, what I think about, how I know things, and what I want to do more of. Initially, when I was training my voice, I would think of Hindustani classical music as a separate entity, uh, and jazz as a separate entity, and kind of hold those uh, far away from each other. So I could really delve into a tradition the way it's meant to sound. But over time, I slowly realized that my voice really adapts to a musical situation uh, in the way that I believe contributes um, well to the music or enhances the music in the right ways, in a thoughtful, intentional way. So when I do sing jazz, uh, people expect me to scat like jazz singers do, but I, I use Indian solfege. I, I just do what seems natural to me and express musical ideas in ways that are authentic to me. Um, and when I've tried not to do that, it doesn't quite sound like me anymore. So it's kind of embracing the part that, you know, I, I am an immigrant from India. This is how my music has always sounded to me. And now that musical vocabulary is expanding, but it's also to retain all the influences that I've always had and that are so important to me and uh, shaping me. So yeah, kind of reconciling both trying to stay open to the current landscape, to the artists that surround me, to learn from them, but at the same time, keeping uh, my sense of identity and musicality, um, retaining that and keeping it um, close to myself. <laughs>